Okay, and on the last part, I will speak about compression and archiving. In the Windows world, if you're familiar with it, I hope not, everyone is, <laughs> just joking, uh, we have tools like Zip or RAR, and these tools do create compressed archive of, for example, directories or a series of files or whatever. In the Unix world, one of our philosophies is let each tool do only one thing and do it the best possible way and do it in the best possible way. Each tool does one thing, but does it awesome. So we have some tools to compress things. These normally compress only one file. And we have some tools which archive different files into one file. Those are called archiving tools. So these are two different tasks. We will start with uh, compressions. For example, I have my, for example, tasks here. You can see tasks are 207 bytes. One of the most common tools people use to compress something is gzip. I can do gzip tasks. And if I lsltrh once more, you can see that I don't have tasks anymore, but I have a tasks txt jz gzip and it's compressed. Please note that when files are very small, practically they are not good for compressing. If you have a file which has an A in it only and you compress it, for sure it will become larger because there are some headers, algorithms, what I have used, what was the original name of the files or whatever. So, uh, and some files are not good for compression. For example, JPEG is a compressed format, so you cannot compress it that much anymore. But texts are very good for compression or programs. Anyway, here we are just showing you commands. There are pairs. So I did uh, gzip, a file, and it gave me that file name which jz in the end and it's compressed. If I want to unzip it, I have to do a, I have to do a g unzip this file and I get back my original file. Even if I check it with file task jz, you can see that this is a gzip compressed data originally was task txt modified and this original size was blah blah. So I can do g unzip tasks and now it is unzipped. I've got my original file back. So gzip something, g unzip uh, something dot jz. This name will automatically be created. You have switches to change the names or whatever. But this was the most important thing you should know. And gzip is the most common tool for uh, compressing things. You can see that it preserves, preserve, preserves time when compress and decompress. And it removes the original file by default. There are switches for this. Another tool is bzip and bunzip. Exactly the same. You can say bzip two tasks it will give you a file which is called tasks txt bz2 and you can be unzip to tasks bz2 and you will get back your original file these are different algorithms for different reasons people might prefer some of them over others in one company bz2 might be more uh common or the boss ordered them to use bz instead of jz or even xz is another one xz and on xz as you can see these are all pairs so you know gzip and gunzip bzip2 and bunzip2 xz and on xz for example the packages are xz compressed exactly the same you can do xz tasks okay it's compressed 
on xz tasks xz you will have gotten back your original file very easy and straightforward these was these were tools which were working on one file but let's see archiving tools before that i have a note here and i have mentioned that tools like on xz are most of the times just calls to xz decompress so these are not always two totally different they are related to each other and sometimes xz do have a uh, switches like decompress on xz is practically calling this but this was how you can compress one file another part of this whole activity is having many files and archiving them in one file most of the time size is same or even larger because you have headers what was the name of the files and whatever but you have only one file this is useful when for example you want to transfer something using a email you cannot you can but it's ugly to attach a lot of files to your email you say okay i have photos tar and you use tar to come to not compress to archive all of these photos into photos tar also it's a good idea to later jz your photo star so it's compressed too but archiving tools are tools which archive different files directories structures into one single file it's good for transferring it's good for backups you have a backup with today's date there dot tar and then you untar it you will get all the files you had on your disk let's see how they work tar is coming from an alien world to linux world that's why its switches are sometimes a little bit different i deleted what i've created before and let's do it i can say tar i can give it switch like this create file but it's very common to omit the dash and say create file this is why i say it's sometimes uncommon tar also find is uncommon in most of our cases when you have a switch with one dash you are just giving it one character but here and when you have for example long words you giving it you are providing two dashes in the case of find you saw that we had name with one dash it is also coming from bsd word anyway tar create file no dash needed but you can give it a dash my important files dot tar creating this file what should be added to it tasks i did a double tap now it's showing me all files appear my new b file and that one megabyte file now i have a file which is called my important files it contains all of these files if i create a directory here move my important files to the new directory go to the new directory here i have that i can say tar when creating i told it create file this file now i can say extract file my files or extract file verbos talk a lot says so okay i created tasks appear my new file and this one as you can see it was very easy i archived some files into one file opened them later tar also works with the directories and everything so i can create a new one tar create file and be verbose and gzip whatever you created in one step so these are two different ideas two different tools but they can work with each other so you can tell tar to use the gzip tar create file do it verbose zip it with gzip the name so my all archive file tar jz because it is tar and i ask it to do a jz so it's the nicer name store all the files you have here so it shows me all the files 
even goes into the directories everything is archived in a new file here which is very small only 4k although it has this one mega file in it in the new i have one archive containing this also i extract it so i have another version of this but because i've used jz and these are only zeros it's very small if i want to open it i can open it here and say tar xf my blah blah it will open overwrite everything if needed i can create a new last door and go to the last door and here i can say tar extract file on the previous directory what was it called my all as you can see double tab only shows the tar archives because i'm using a tar command and i have all of those files here or i could say i'm deleting everything here double checking that i'm doing it correctly okay i've deleted everything in this directory i can say i only want info txt info txt not found in archived hmm. let's see what is in this archive how can we do it tar dash dash list lists there so i can say tar l file my all no not lf so let's do dash dash list hmm. maybe i need xf let's check this is good to learn list list dash f archive dash dash list dash f Ah, dash t is the short for list so i have to use it like this i have to use it like this i believe because i'm using dashes so everywhere i have to list use dashes or i have to go with short form which is tf this only shows me the file in this archive it was not info right didn't i have a file called info it seems no okay let's go with my tasks so i can say tar extract files on previous directory it is called my archive and i need my tasks only open my tasks i will keep this trial and error so you can see that how you can learn new things so on tar we have cf which is create archive archive name all the files i need dash xf extract this file dash z gzip it dash b busy it dash v be verbos talk a lot and dash r append new files to the current available archive okay append also it is this is important to know if you do tar create files for example backup.tar and you give it a slash because it's very common to say okay i want slash etc i want slash home for example and i want slash leap for example leap okay this will read all of these directories and will archive them into backup tar but when you open it extract it and say tar xf backup dot tar what happens is when on tarring it will remove this slash from the beginning so if you do this in a directory the etc will be created in this directory the home will be created in this directory and the lib will be created in this directory the reason is security because if you do this and then you do this you are overwriting your etc so it removes the leading slashes from the files good idea and the last command you should know from this section is cpio it's another command to archive things it's older for magnetic tapes specially used 
you won't see it much nowadays unless you do one specific thing working with magnetic tank or some others when you want to do with cpio i believe one of the very famous archives that is using cpio but i cannot remember you have to run cpio provide it with a pipe or give it as a list some file names and tell it to output the archive we will see this uh techniques in the next section but practically it's easy i'm running cpio-o create output giving it the list of files which are here and asking it to write its output here so practically all the files which are here will be archived into this file when i want to open it later i have to say cpio-id i is for extract dash d is create folders if needed and i say cpio dash id your input comes from this archive a little bit ugly because this is all and used for magnetic tails the good thing is instead of ls you can do a find so you can do a find on all the files with this specific type with this specific extension whatever give all of them to cpio sorry cpio and I want CPIO to output the archive into this file. And later you can recover them. We will see about this piping and redirecting in the next section, but it's very important. This was long, but this was important. And most of these commands will be used by you on a daily basis, other than CPIO, except CPIO. Have fun. Let's go to the next section.